Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. So I have a little bit of a show and tell here and a major unboxing to do. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this neck. So I ordered this neck which supposedly was supposed to have no frets on it, but just the fret slots. It came with frets. Uh, I asked for no inlays, but for the inlays to be cut in the fretboard. That happened, but I ended up having to take and pluck out the frets and put my own frets inside here. So I'm going to do a complete fret job. I got my frets already installed on here. I just have to do a level crowning and polishing. But with that, not having any inlays on it whatsoever, just having the cutout, I was able to do what I wanted to do with those inlay spots to match the Epiphone 100 candy green with the lace pattern on it. I had a neck for that, didn't like the way it turned out, got another neck. So what's going on over here is I have a different inlay that I ended up making and as you can see they are kind of like spider webs and that kind of matches the theme of the body now at the 12th fret I end up putting my own logo inside there which is kind of cool because I was able to find a program which actually is not really a program it's a website that you can uh, resize photos into thousands or inches millimeters or whatever and print them up from that website download the print so you can always have it and be able to cut out what you need to make whatever you want to do in this case inlays so I have some vinyl uh, printing paper which is not really paper if it's made out of vinyl and I was able to make my inlays print them out now the vinyl paper has got a adhesive backing on it which is kind of nice because not having anything in these inlays glue or, or whatsoever it's a nice clean cut nice square edges pointed edges everything else really nice flat bottom i was able to stick the inlays to it with the self adhesive that's on them well the paper i can't say inlays because they weren't quite inlaid yet had no problems with any corners peeling up no problems with anything as far as lifting goes didn't have to use any ca glue to hold them down well after doing the fret job over here i don't have any more ca glue so i have to get some more of that i always use like a medium i've got medium uh heavy and then i have like light to light where it's like water thin if you want to call it that now the epoxy resin that I use is something different. It's called liquid glass. Instead of being a one-to-one, -one, it's a two-to-one. So it's two resin to one hardener. And what I'm used to using is something else where it's a one-to-one, -one, where it's one part hardener, one part resin, uh, but it's a thicker consistency than the liquid glass is. So it's a little bit harder to get bubbles to rise to the surface, and you gotta keep going over it with some type of a heat as far as like either a torch or a lighter torch some that I use for something small like this to get those bubbles to rise to the top. Now, with the liquid glass, because it's such a thin consistency after you mix it, it is very easy for the bubbles to rise up. Now, the only problem with it is, is because it's so thin, it doesn't form a bubble over the square openings of what you're trying to fill. The thicker stuff kind of makes a dome over it. You can kind of overfill it without it kind of going off to the sides and, and making a mess of whatever project that you're working on. With this one here, it's a little bit different. So I had to build it up and build it up and build it up until uh, I, I was able to sand this to get my radius in the fretboard. Now, the nice thing about this is, like it says, liquid glass. It's very clear. It's very durable, very hard. Um, it works out just like the one-to-one -one that I was using before. Now, I have a plan for the, the liquid glass, and I bought some tools to help me with that plan. Also, to uh, do a few other things as well that I'm going to try getting into. Now, like I said, this is, next, is for the Epiphone 100 the Candy Green with the lace, which is basically skulls, and 
spider webs. So there's the theme. A lot of you guys were saying that you like the way that the Les Paul body looks with a pointed headstock. So that's what I went with, with this as well. So now all I have to do is get this thing sanded down and painted. Um, fretboard is basically complete. Now this is not a rosewood. I can't remember what he said that this was. But as you can see, it's got a kind of a sheen to it. Almost like a gloss like the inlays do. What I ended up doing is after I sanded down the inlay part over here, which I had to sand the whole fretboard in order to do so because of the radius, uh, I went through the different steps of sandpaper for polishing, okay, because I had to because I wanted to polish out these inlays to get them to look like glass. The one thing about it is, is you're also polishing the fretboard. So when I buffed them out, I buffed the whole fretboard out, and there's no open pores in this whatsoever. This is very tight, so you're able to get a sheen on it like this. And there's no oil on this fretboard whatsoever. It is has not been oiled. Can't oil it because if I try to oil it, I'm not going to be able to install the frets to it, which I already done. And I won't be able to put tape on this because the tape won't stick if there's oil on it in order to complete the fret job. So I'm going to put this off to the side right now. Let's get into some of the unboxing that I got going on because I accumulated quite a few things. Here. All right, first box here. Let's get this thing open. All right, so this is something that I ordered. Brand new. And the reason for it is because of, well, when I get it open, you'll see what it is. Make sure it's in here. What else is in here? Well, just a piece of board. Alright. So, what I ended up doing is I've got that throne that I use for uh, the electronic drums that kit that I have. And I don't like it because it wiggles. It wiggles a lot. It's very, very loose, especially in the area where the two pieces meet up. Uh, you feel like you're going to like fall on an angle. So I ordered a brand new one, and here it is. And I can tell just by the weight of the, the, the assembly for the stand for it is very, very heavy. Nice padded, thick throne, very kind of cushiony for you. Very well wrapped, very nicely done. Oh yeah, this is really nice. This feels really good. And uh, yeah, this ought to work out perfect for what I needed for it. I think this is a little bit smaller than the one I got too. So yeah, so this ought to be what I need and what I'm looking for. So I don't fall off the throne, right? <laughs> All right. So this is something that I ordered to go with the epoxy resins that I want to kind of get into and do a little bit of uh, experimenting with. And let's get this opened. Put a box in a box, right? Oh no, it's not. Alright, so this is supposed to be a... an epoxy resin tray, alright? So you are able to put epoxy resin inside of here, and it's not supposed to stick to the insert inside of here at all. So usually when you do any type of an epoxy mold, you use a wax that you coat the inside of the mold with and that makes the epoxy release from that mold a lot easier. Now I don't know what's in this bag here. <laughs> like I ain't got enough mallets. But it comes with a mallet, as you can see. And what this is supposed to do is you're supposed to tap on the sides of it, breaking the uh, mold loose from the epoxy resin. Now, this is a deep pour, so I can go up to like two inches, three inches with this, and basically make an epoxy resin body for a guitar. Small table, stool, whatever. I got this for doing the epoxy resin for the guitars. 
I got an idea that I want to try doing and this is going to work out really really good so let's go into unboxing well number three alright so this box right here is from Alan Eden guitars and this is something that is going to go with this box that is underneath it so let me get this open here check this out I haven't opened it to see what's going on with it all right another rubber band all right so this is a guitar neck as you can tell with a pedal headstock on it now so I was looking at the body wow these frets are nice they're actually kind of nice but they're a little bit a little bit sharp actually they're quite a bit sharp so it's got a rosewood fretboard that has no inlays in it but you do have your dot markers on the side plastic nut which will be replaced uh, pedal headstock because this has got to get cut to a certain dimension for the uh, Motley Crue McMars guitar and so I was looking at it the guitar really carefully and kind of whatever I got as far as photos go it looks like it is either a Strat or a Telecaster style neck it's got the nut similar to this not the big nut that you'd see on a Les Paul so I ordered a neck that is going to be able to cut this the way the original is so that's this put this off to the side now I bought from Allen Eden guitars before as far as necks go and stuff and they're not bad necks as, as far as the quality now this behemoth right here is basically the hard guts of what I am looking for actually what I could have done is I just could have done this Alright. Ah, smell that fresh wood. Wow. So this is a piece of basswood. And we got one, two, three pieces that are glued together for the body. And it is really nice. And really fucking heavy. It'd be nice when I cut this up and get rid of a lot of the weight that's on this thing. It's supposed to be dried. It's supposed to be, um, you know, ready to build. So all I'm waiting for now is just my template, and then I can start cutting out this big enough for the star guitar. In fact, it is the measurements of this. If I could find my small tape measure that I had over here, now where the hell did that go? All right, so here it is. All right, so the measurements of this is almost 18 and a half to almost 28 and a half. So you got 18 across and 28 long. That should be plenty big for that star guitar. So I'm going to put this off to the side, get my extra cardboard here. I want to keep this thing protected as long as possible until I start doing my build, which means I don't want no sharp edges or anything else hitting it. Be right back. Alright, so I have a Amazon bag over here. Let's get this thing open. And no, I don't buy, I don't have an Amazon card to be purchasing stuff with. 
All right, so this here is resin tape in different sizes. Now, resin tape is could be used for molds. It could be used for seaming up uh, two pieces and leaving a gap in the middle. The epoxy resin is not supposed to go through this. Uh, I have a plan for a Jackson V guitar that I'm going to end up using this on to kind of... Uh, Give it a custom look as well with some epoxy resins so i picked this stuff up to try to see if um well what i have in mind can be done and i have a lot in mind that i want to do believe me there is so much that i've been thinking of that i want to get build you know. all right next what we got here This is the Wilkinson's bridge that is for the Star Nick Mars Star guitar. So I've got a brand new Wilkinson's bridge here. This will be put on there. It's a hard, going to be a hardtail. Um, no Floyd arrows or anything else that's going to be on there. So I put this off to the side. Make sure I remember where I put it. Okay, this is from Five Alarm, or yeah, Five Alarm Guitars. And let's see what this is. All right, so these are Floyd Rose templates. So when I start doing the Floyd Rose uh, project that I have coming up later on, I've got brand new templates because I end up cutting up the templates that I got to use for other things other than a Floyd Rose template. Alright, so these guys didn't really put this in a box or anything, but this is the foam tape that I was telling you guys about a while back that I could use for automotive use and as you can see it basically can come make a cutoff line where you're masking at between door jams and stuff so you don't get a uh, paint or overspray between door jams. Now, the nice thing about this too is this also helps with not having, um, let's see, how do I explain it? Not having sharp tape lines, all right? So here's the roll and you just pull it up like this. There is adhesive on this side and no adhesive on this side. So when you take a piece of this and you end up putting it, say, on this box. And I take this and I'll go around the edge of it loosely, not tight. So when I do a spray to fix a chip or something and I don't want to have to or don't need to spray the whole guitar or anything, uh, what happens is if you spray straight onto this, it makes a shadow underneath it, a very light coating of paint, while it focuses on the area that you're actually spraying and need to paint. And when you peel this off, you'll have a fade between the old surface and the new surface. It makes it easier to blend the paint, buffing it, sanding and buffing to get things to match up with each other, which in my case, I've done it a few times already with just roll tape. Roll tape is not cutting it. This stuff works really good. I picked this up off of Amazon as well. Last but not least is something that I've seen uh, another YouTuber get or buy or have or whatever. And you kind of know me with, with, with headphones, all right? I'm still looking for the perfect either in-ear bud or some type of a headphone that doesn't get shoved all the way inside your ears in order to listen to music and enjoy sound quality. So I picked these up because another YouTuber said so. No, not really, because I wanted to experience it myself. So this is the LOI TMI, and these are the uh, Cozy Clip open ear buds. 
and I've been wanting to try these out ever since I've seen them. Um, I kind of read some stuff about them. They seem to be all right, but depending on what I consider sound quality and what others consider sound quality may be different. So what I'm going to end up doing is throwing these in charge. I'll do my own review on these as far as how they sound because, you know, I'm into sound quality, always have been. Uh, I consider myself a audiophile, uh, especially with the home equipment that I use, plus with the car audio stuff that I got into. Always looking to be able to listen to music um, and not have to listen to a lot of compression. Uh, I've got albums, I've got record players, I've got, you know, I still have some reel to reels. Hell, I even have a few A tracks still. Don't have an A track player anymore, but I still have A tracks. I have a shitload of cassettes, and, you know, this is, I like my music. So this is going to be something that is really going to kind of tell me if, you know, if I use it with my phone, if I use it with my computer, if I can use it, I, probably, I know I can use it with my receiver, um, if it's going to end up giving me the quality that I want. Now, the in-ear buds, like this stuff that I bought, the EMM Personal, these work really, really nice. They sound really fucking good. And these are more of a monitor than anything else and the bluetooth does not disconnect has not disconnected haven't had any problems with disconnection i was able to leave my phone in my garage and be able to walk around in my front yard and cut the grass with these things without having any dropouts um the only thing is the around the neck thing i'm not too crazy about it but you know, it is what it is as far as battery power and everything else and recharging. The sound quality of these is really, really good. I'm very happy, even though they are an in-ear bud where you really need to seal them in your ears. They cut out any outside surrounding noise, which that's something I like, um, but can also be um, a problem especially if you're doing something, riding a bike or whatever, and you know you got to pay attention to your surroundings. But as far as sound quality goes, as long as you got them sealed up in your ear, you have mids, highs, and lows. Lows sound good. Mids sound good without sounding like there's any added mids. Lows sound good without sounding like there's any added lows. And your highs are even, they're there, and it, it's crisp and clean. These here, once I kind of get an idea of, you know, let's see how you open this. All right, you open it like this. Once I get an idea of what these are going to sound like, because these are not in ear, and I'm not too sure if these are going to provide the sound quality that I'm actually looking for. They might end up, might end up giving them to somebody else. They can use them for whatever they need. So there's really not much here but a booklet power cord and it's holder so it's USB rechargeable so I'm gonna go hit these plug them in and recharge them I have so many of these damn things okay I can use the phone plug to recharge these instead of having to use because I think this is that C yeah this is the C USB C so I plug these in let them charge up and kind of see what they sound like a little bit later on if I like them, if they're useful, then great. I'll be able to use these if I can adjust with an equalizer and get, um, you know, if there's too much mid to it and I can kind of like tweak it with an equalizer, then that'll be great as well. If not, and they still sound like ass, well, then I'm getting rid of them, you know. Nice little egg, isn't it? All right, guys, so I kind of listened to these cozy clip whatever you want to call them, uh, on-ear, I can't say in-ear, but on-ear headphones, and they got one part of it right, um, they are cozy, but the other part I will have to get into later as far as a video goes, because th there's a lot that, uh, let's just say, I wouldn't waste your money on these, and there's a couple of reasons why, 
not necessarily sound quality because they do sound pretty decent it's just the location and how the speaker on this little bud and the distance between your ear, ear canal um, really makes a difference of how these sound so I'm not going to get into it right now but that'll probably be a later video you guys take it easy have a good one and I will catch up with all you all later